thought it might be useful to show you an example um, of a teaching session that I made uh, using this flipping the classroom idea. So when I was thinking about what might be useful to create as the first set of videos for the students, I chose something that I found myself repeating a lot during teaching sessions. And I wondered whether it would be useful to uh, make some videos of this and then have them published online so that, and accessible to students so that they could go back and re-watch these if it was an idea that they were finding difficulty with. So the first uh, set of videos that I'd like to show you here are these two videos, the Semiotics Part 1 and Semiotics Part 2. When I'm making the videos, I try to break them down to 10 minutes-ish, 15 minutes at a push. I make them so that they're self-paced, so that uh, students can play, they can rewind, they can fast forward, they can make it full screen, they can watch it in a window on its own, whatever way is most useful for them to approach the information. And I try to make these available to the students between set three and seven days before the session so that they have a long time to uh, fit this in really to any other activities or uh, work or jobs that they need to be doing in between time. The link to these videos has changed so you can have a look at these if you go to the links in the video description below. So you might want to pause the video now and just go and have a little look so that you can get an idea of what these are like. Part two of any teaching session is the part where we're testing and discussing. So this happens in class. Uh, often it will involve me facilitating with a whiteboard where I'm scribing up the notes that the students shout out to me. Um, usually I try to keep this part of the session to about 15 to 20 minutes long. So often I'll give uh, one of the students uh, the task of timing us for 15 minutes. And once that 15 minutes is up, we need to have finished and moved on to the next element of the task. So depending on uh, what we're dealing with at that particular time, I might be asking the students to recap what they've learned from the video, to bring up any questions for the group, that they've been thinking about. All of this time, I'm really just facilitating the class, maybe prompting them on some of the things that they may have forgotten. And I start the session by asking students to feedback what happened in the video. Part three of any session is the task. And this is where students get the opportunity to apply what they've been learning, maybe in a theoretical concept. So, with this idea with semiotics, they would have uh, watched these videos, they would have come into class, discussed all the different parts, really ironed out any problems that they have uh, with this technique. And then I would set them a 20 to 40 minutes kind of long task, usually in pairs or small groups, again, to keep those conversations going, just so that they can really check in with each other and make sure that they're doing it right, I suppose. And their focus in this task uh, that relates to the semiotics video would be to look at um, documentation of artworks in books, to choose out a specific um, artist to look at, and to start to unpick and analyse their images and their artwork. Um, so this happened, this session actually happened on the second week of term for a group of first year students. So I'm really at this point kind of testing where they're at, getting them to develop their vocabulary, getting them to develop their skills of analysis and getting them to apply a new technique which, which most of them don't, haven't had exposure to before and apply it in a way that they're going to be asked to do throughout their course. So this is a really kind of foundational thing that they're looking at. And maybe that's important when you're thinking about which videos to prepare yourself. 
It might be that there are particular techniques or uh, particular ways of doing things that you could actually prepare as a video lecture for your students and then you could continue to reuse and reuse that. So the investment of time um, that you put into it at the start should pay off really. It should allow you to use your sessions um, focusing more on the task and more on facilitating the testing of the learning that's going on. Then we come to part number four and this is where students share what they've learned with the group. They share the results of the task they've been working on. So for this particular um, task there were 10 minutes-ish at the end of the session where the students report back to the group and share their insights. So in this case, they're making public what they've learned. Um, students were talking each other through their semiotic analysis of the um, artworks that they had selected. And they could see how each other were picking up on the different techniques, how each other were employing things, and what they were really um, gaining and learning from that, which I think seems to be quite an important part of this type of session.